Well, I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out, but we've got a wheel bearing gone on this smaller chisel plow, and it happened down at the end of the field here. And we've gotten a fair amount of rain. So you might be saying, well, this doesn't look too good as far as it being chisel plowed, but the cover crop was pretty tall in here. And once the Terra disc gets done with it, it'll look real good. So we're going to try to inch our way over to this chisel plow, get the wheel bearing fixed. And hopefully, once it dries off a little bit, these guys can actually finish chisel plowing. Now I know in one of the previous videos I said they were going to finish chisel plowing up the other day. Well, they got rained out twice here and they've got just a little bit of ground left here and Alex had this wheel bearing go the other day and I'm hoping that the spindle is okay so here's the tire there so she didn't go too far with it anyway so we'll have to get this tire pulled out of there and uh, get it fixed. All right, we managed to roll this tire out from underneath it here. And it appears that the spindle is in good shape, doesn't even have any dirt on it. The tire was right there. And she noticed back about here what had happened. So we're just going to do this the easy way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hub out of the wheel. And then we can run the hub over to the back of the truck and work on it there. So let's get this, get the lug nuts loosened up there, knock the hub out, get it cleaned up, get the spindle cleaned up, slap some new bearings in there to seal. And we're gonna need a dust cap as well. get this hub removed now we're just going to clean it up pull the races out and uh, install some new bearings here well we've got all the grease cleaned out of the inner part of the hub and I've got to get these races out and on these hubs there's not a groove an opening in the center of the hub to get a punch in behind it so what we're going to do is we're going to weld a bead on the inside of that race. So once it cools, it'll shrink. And when it shrinks that race, it'll come out easier. And it'll put a lip on there so that we can get a chisel or a punch against it to pound uh, them out of there. Now there was quite a bit of grease in this hub. Uh... I don't know what caused the bearing to go other than there is a lot of movement on them wheels in and out of the dirt and the bumps and everything else. Didn't have any dirt in there. So I don't think the seal failed and I don't think the dust cap fell off of it. So I don't know what caused the bearing to go other than just uh, wear and tear here. So let's get the welder fired up and we'll put a bead of weld on that.
apparently this stuff is somewhat flammable. That's what I used to clean up some of the inner parts of this hub and as you can see it caught on fire on me. So I've got a bead of weld on there and I guarantee you that it doesn't even uh, have to look pretty in order for that to work. So while that's cooling down, I'm gonna put the chisel plow down and we're gonna clean up that spindle, get the nut off in there. Hopefully there's no damage to where the seal rides. Sometimes you get some damage on the spindle where the seal rides on it. So let's go ahead and get that cleaned up and uh, then this will be cool and we can pound them races out. All right, so we've got this implement down, which therefore brought the wheels up out of the ground. And we're just going to go ahead and clean this up. And it doesn't appear to have any spindle damage. All the old parts are still there. We've got the inner bearing, parts of it, the cage, and then of course the outer bearing is still somewhat intact. The cotter pin is slightly wore out. So we're going to get this cleaned up, pull everything off of it, and then uh, get the hub ready to go on here. But as you can see, this didn't go too far before she noticed it, or else this would all be cleaned off from it going through the dirt. So I've seen these uh, problems before. And usually the implement will get pulled two lengths of the field before they realize what's actually going on. So, looks like she was paying attention. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. Alright, we've got that all cleaned up. We managed to get all of our parts salvaged there. So we'll be sure to put them in a scrap bucket. Or in a couple years we'll probably be finding that with the chopper when we flip this back to... Uh, hay here in four years so uh yeah let's get the uh races pound out of the hub and start to get that process put together and then we can get the hub on here and get the wheel on and call it quits for this job Alright, we have both of these removed. Now we are going to get some new ones in there, get some grease packed into new bearings, get everything put into place, and then we'll put the hub on, slap a dust cap on there, bolt the wheel on, and then this job will be done. All right, we've got the races installed in the hub, and we've got the inner bearing in there along with the seal. We have even um, applied some Landol grease if you notice the blue grease down in there so we'll go ahead and we'll set the hub on set our outer bearing on tighten up the nut put a new dust cap on there bolt the wheel on and then she can come and get this and as you can see with the amount of cover crop growing here that's why this is plowed in the condition it is but what we wanted to do is break up some compaction, so that is done that. Then we'll show you when I'm planting this lot uh, what it looks like after a pottinger goes through and just demolishes all this stuff that's kind of just uprooted here. And uh, it'll, it'll make it look like there was never any wheat standing here. So let's go ahead and get this job done. Looks like it's going to rain.
my knots. We held to lose two of them. This job is done. We'll just pick up our tools and this will be ready to go another couple thousand acres. All right, this is all back together here and we're going to go ahead and try to get out of here without getting stuck. I do have a chain with me. I might have to pull myself out of here, but it seems to be all right. We haven't really done any of a walk any bit of a real walk around of this truck because it's really not completely put together yet but just before we started planting corn i did however run out to i think it was lowe's or home depot whoever sells craftsman and i was able to get this 26 inch top tool chest fits right in this cabinet hole here nicely it's just that hole is just a little long for it, but there isn't any boxes. I've got like 28 inches to there. There isn't any other boxes that I could find that would fit. However, the other utility body that I had on here, that box wouldn't have fit in this front compartment. And there's enough room to get the lid open before it hits the back. And then um, if the lid does end up not getting closed to keep the door shut, this door here will keep them shut we're on a little bit of a side hill so this is and the doors drawers are going to open up but it's got just a cheap set of tools in it uh the socket set there is a cheap harbor freight setup and then these are all the wrenches and whatever that we had in the other truck and then of course i'm going to be battling here to get these doors drawers all shut uh yeah, let's set you guys down, get these held shut, get the lid closed. So that's that. On flat ground, that is fine. I do have the toolbox bolted to the floor so that it can't shift around or tip over out of the truck because you know that that would happen. We just took the drawers out, drilled holes down through it, and bolted it to the utility body floor. That toolbox is like... I don't know two or three hundred bucks and they there is a uh, company that makes these drawer assemblies for these utility bodies but they get up into where they're like sixteen hundred bucks for one set of drawers um i walked around this when we got this somewhat put together um or put on the truck got the welder leads in this hole here got um the air compressor reel and the torch reel is in this cabinet that just fit in there there's just enough room to get the door shut and then of course we've got hydraulic oil and a two and a half gallon jug of engine oil those jugs are just napa pails they've got regular high trance in them that we get from the oil company just some odds and ends power tools here and then this lead here uh, we can plug into jumper cables um, and run off of it the this goes right to the battery of the truck and then of course we're using it for the electric start on the uh, air compressor and then we've got just odds and ends in this cabinet some bolts some wire fasteners uh, legs and torch 
uh, tank caps and whatever. So we'll go ahead and get out of here. Hopefully we don't need to pull this truck to the road, but in the event that we do, that'd make a good video, right? So we'll see you when we get back to the shop. the shop I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be able to plant any corn but I'm gonna get the corn planter ready to go here it's gonna be raining here in a few hours however it's starting to dry out uh, from the rain that we had gotten here the other day so let's get the corn planter ready to roll here and we'll see if we can put any corn in the ground uh, we're just getting back here to the corn planter and what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out and I have to unload that fertilizer tank there and put a different fertilizer on because we're going to be going into some ground that we didn't have manure on so we're going to go ahead and do that put a little bit of seed corn in this it does not look like we're going to be able to plant anything today we need the damn sun to come out for a little while to uh, dry this ground out some it's just not quite there yet Now we got that front tank empty we're gonna go ahead and clean out this hose so that when we start loading this next product we don't have any mixture going in there so we're gonna see how well this does it worked good the other day but now that I got the camera out it's probably not gonna work all that well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hose and we're gonna empty it into that pail and we're gonna see if we can keep from spilling any
All right, we got about all we need in that front tank there. And uh, when I went to pour that, move this fertilizer, or I spilled a little bit, but I didn't do too bad. Um, the other day, there was a little more in the hose. And the hose was able to evacuate out a good bunch, gave the pail some weight, and then I was able to dump the rest a little easier, believe it or not. So that is uh, going to do it for this video, folks. I want to thank you for watching, and we will catch you at the next video.